Well, we're here in New Mexico to install the L500 with the CDK17 for a client. We've got a few sandwiches for lunch, and we're going to go take care of getting the optical tube on the mount, get all the cables routed, tune the motors, and hopefully get on sky tonight if it stays clear. All righty, we got the saddle on the L500 mount. It's on the wedge, everything's tightened down. We have both axes locked and enabled on the L500. And we're gonna go carry the CDK17, lift it into place, tighten down the bolts and start getting the accessories attached. Okay, we have the CDK-17 mounted up here. We have the IRF-90 attached, the focuser and rotator. Next up, we're gonna balance the accessories on the optical tube. So for dynamic balancing for direct drives, imagine the optical tube is sliced in half. Put the accessory boxes 180 degrees opposite of each other, and that'll allow us to easily balance the declination axis. So EFA's here. I'm gonna put the Delta-T box 180 just on this other side. Okay, now that the accessories are balanced 180 off of each other, we're gonna route some of the cables and continue in balancing the deck. Okay, so the Delta T box is up. We have our secondary heater and the primary heater and they'll be supplied with two cables that are labeled secondary, primary. Run one end from the back to the back plate of the telescope, and then we'll go ahead and we'll run the cables from the EFA to the focuser. So for cable routing, be creative as much as you would like. For me, I think we'll just kind of curl it up and we will zip tie it to the back. And this one is gonna plug into the primary. That'll be your dew temperature heating cord to heat the back of the primary mirror. So we'll get some zip ties and we'll put those up. Okay, so we have the EFA kit wired, and underneath the saddle, there's actually room to feed some of these cables just so they stay out of the way. I like to add zip ties to some of them to make sure everything stays secure while the telescope's slewing. All right, so to talk to the EFA kit, your equipment's gonna come with a USB to serial adapter. It's gonna have an intermediate portion that will go to an RJ45, and that will plug into the PC port on the actual EFA kit, and then you'll take a female USB and run that down to your computer or a USB hub if you're using that in the mount. So for us, I think we're gonna go ahead and utilize the same under the optical tube above the saddle. We're gonna go ahead and secure the cables, and we're gonna feed them down through the mount because we have a hub. Alrighty, we have the accessories on the telescope. We've cable routed everything so it's zip tied, secured, checked the range of motion, and then we went ahead and balanced the declination axis and moved on and balanced the right ascension. So when we actually move the telescope, whenever we point it, it's just gonna stay stationary and when we say balancing a direct drive, that is what we mean at plane wave because that's gonna allow us to perform a high quality tune on the motors and yield high precision tracking around 0.05 to 0.15 arc seconds. All right, so we're doing the motor tuning here, kind of doing it remotely from next to the dome, which is funny. So it's going through the frequency sweeps right now. So we're gonna let this run and get a little bit of dinner, monitor it while we're on Team Viewer to make sure everything's running safely and let it keep making the direct drive music. <laughs>
All right, so we got done. We did the direct drive motor tuning. I tested a few points. The tracking looks awesome. 0.05 to 0.1 arc seconds at a few spots. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and build a pointing model, and then we're gonna use the pointing model to adjust the wedge, and then we're gonna start imaging from there. Okay, so we're connected to the dome, and we're connected to PWI-4 for the L-mount. Right now, we're gonna go ahead and home the mount, and then we're gonna build the first pointing model. Okay, before we do a pointing model, we wanna make sure that the stars are in focus. So right now, we're doing an auto-focusing run, as you can see. So once we're in focus, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna build a small 15 point model, and then we're gonna adjust the polar alignment with PWI-4. Okay, we have focused the telescope. Now in PWI-4, we're gonna home the mount, and then we're gonna go to commands, build pointing model, and we're gonna build a new pointing model to tell us how far out our polar alignment is. And the system will already calculate our pixel scale, that's all good. What we want to do is click more and we want to do add spaced points. And we just want to do a quick 15 point model. So 15 points, our minimum altitude. We're going to do 30 degrees above the horizon. Max 88, leave set, everything else. And go ahead and click OK. And we're gonna make sure that since the dome will rotate, we're gonna enable prompt the dome to let us know before we actually capture the image. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and click start. And it will make sure it prompts us before we take the first image. All right, so we're going through the pointing model. It's almost finished. And then from there, we'll look at the actual polar alignment error and adjust it with the wrench. Okay, so the pointing model is done. From here, we're gonna go to commands. And we're gonna click view pointing model. And it's gonna show us our axis error. So the system is aimed a little bit, 52 arc minutes to the south, and it's two, looks like two, arc seconds, now two degrees to the east. Okay, we just finished building our pointing model. What I did was I clicked commands and I clicked view pointing model. From there, I'm seeing that our system is 52 arc minutes to the south, so we need to raise it 52 arc minutes to the north. We are two degrees to the east, so we need to bring it two degrees to the west to correct. And our RMS pointing is two arc seconds of error. And from here, we're gonna click the polar alignment and it's gonna offset the model. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and do the alignment. Okay, we built the model and we've offset it in the software. So now we need to mechanically loosen the bolts on the wedge and we're gonna do the azimuth and we'll do the altitude as well. So to turn the system counterclockwise, I need to turn and tighten the bolt on the left, loosen the one on the right, and when I tighten this one on the left, it's going to push the system counterclockwise in azimuth, about one degree until I see uh, the star in the field of view. I'll do altitude and I need to lower it, and then we'll see Sirius in the field of view and center it in the crosshairs in Maxim. All right, so we got the star here, nice and good and centered. And what we did was we tightened everything down 
and we'll go show that right quick. So these have all been tightened down for the azimuth. The altitude are tightened down as well back there. And I did the final last tweak with the azimuth. Altitude back as well is locked. And from here, uh, we are gonna be very well polar lined and uh, ready to image. All right, so we're building a new pointing model after doing the polar alignment, and we're just gonna see how all the adjustments went. We should be easily less than 30 arc minutes and hopefully should be a little less than that. All right, so we just got done with the new model. We have a few arc seconds of air to the north and we got 15 arc seconds in azimuth, which is absolutely still incredible. And the pointing model is gonna compensate that out and you'll be able to capture very deep, long exposures of the night sky. And from there, we can build a little bit longer uh, integration model. So I just did 15 points. You can go ahead and do a final pointing model of anywhere between 75 to 100 points in the night sky for the pointing model. And then save the pointing model as default. And when you power cycle and restart PWI-4, that will reopen every time you home the mount. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and now we're just going to build a bigger pointing model and start imaging tonight.